Statue of limitations. Statue yeah. of limitations. <laughs> Welcome to episode 19 <laughs> of Black, White, and Red all over. Uh, this week, Victor Yo. and I, Ryan, uh, we reviewed some books that we we wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I took the bullet uh, for some books that some you, suggestions. you wanted to. We, we, we didn't read Comic Shop News. Why, why is that a thing? Yeah. Can, can y'all explain this to me? Yeah, like, like two people? Yeah, two, two people. different people threw that out there. Yeah, yeah it's like... The, I want hugs? Like, what is this? Yeah, does the hive mind need like a catheter for their uh, brain or something? That's, yeah, I mean, y'all need something. to get that checked out. At least it wasn't Shudder, though. Oh, can't get on that one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Joe? I can't do it. Can't do it. Um, but one of the things that, that was on the list was uh, the Spidey 2099. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. right. Um, what did you think of that? I actually, I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. but... It felt like just a continuation. Of, I can see that. Of, of, I can see that. Yeah, it's like a throwback. It's Peter David, so it's it is, automatically it is. Right, right. solid. It is solid. It's very 90s, though. Yeah. Like, in its, in its execution, very 1990s. Um, I do get what you mean, because I wasn't exactly following what happened before, so yeah. I'm coming in dry, but it definitely carries as though you have to have that precursor knowledge, that yeah. prereq. Yeah. So if, if you're not up to current in terms of Spider-Man 2099 right. appearing in Superior Spider-Man, right. You're gonna yeah. like, and you say, like, what? Like, what? So it's a dude from the future, right. and he's got like a hologram wristwatch. Uh, and it, 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 it <laughs> sounds like, like that, it sounds so terrible. <laughs> yeah, but I apologize, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 I, I did kind of give it like a booster gold type vibe, though, yeah. where it's it's booster gold, but a little bit more uh, serious. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. time, time yeah. travel is involved. Right. But there's like kooky stuff, like he, you know, how he got his money to be able to do exactly. Things. I thought that was genius. Actually, yeah, that's actually I'm like freaking brilliant, right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and the way he gets out of the death trap at the end that of the book was amazing. Was, was brilliant. That was amazing. That was one that I was like, oh, where is he going yeah. with? Oh, nice. okay. But yeah, I did think that this book as. Um, it definitely had the carryover feeling, but as yeah. a first issue, it's setting things up very yes, nicely. Very it's setting well. a stage. It's it's hinting towards the future, and yeah, and it's it, gonna be a good ride. And it shows Miguel is not as smart as Parker because he right. left clues about who he may be. Yes, which was yes, just brilliant. Pete that would she never have done that. that. The, the other character figured it out. I was yes, like, oh. like like that. Like yeah. she's already on it. Like oh my god, I'm damsel into. Well, okay, this is what we're gonna yeah, do. Let's do this. I like that. She's very Lex in that oh. way. Very Definitely. nice. Very, very nice. Uh, what else did you tackle? Well, I, uh, I did Empty Man number two. Okay. Uh, as everyone knows, I'm a fan of just really, really dark stuff, right? This continues it. Uh, basically, the, the setup for the book is there is what people kind of think is a virus okay. that, that's going around. And nobody, nobody knows for sure. But there's this cult that is convinced that there's this entity called the Empty Man. Okay. And he's actually the, the, the thing that's going to be bringing about the rapture and the apocalypse. Oh, wow. Uh, but what happens is people get infected with the Empty Man virus. They begin having hallucinations. Uh, they usually end up ending their lives either through suicide or some kind of violent action that en ends up killing them. Right. The people that survive through that mm -hmm. go catatonic, like just basically in, uh, basically comatose, except they'll, they'll gibber in their kind of sleep. Is that, okay. uh, is that what we would call it? Um, really creepy cryptic things like ah oh, the trees are rotting here and the wind screams through the branches. Oh, oh, oh man. And and it's a, a police detective and somebody who's connected with the C D C Okay. Are trying to figure out what's going on and how, how it all went place. It's it's really dark. Uh it it, it Gives me the vibe of an old uh, old sci-fi series that was on, I think, like the, the late '90s Threshold, oh, wow. where there was okay. entities coming through from a different dimension, right. and it's like trees of glass. And so people are, when they see that, they kind of go kind of go berserk. So, I I really I liked it. I like that one a lot. What issue is this? That's issue two. Second prints oh, nice. number one, unfortunately, are coming in here very soon. Okay, okay, I'm gonna have to check that one out myself. Yeah. I took on a uh, all new X-Men. Um, and I hadn't been following this one, despite being a, a big fan of Bendis and a big fan yeah. of, of Stuart um, Imonen. I love his artwork. Oh. Um, the kinetics that I saw off of the the previews, I was like, I got to I got to give this a read. Yeah. But it's the culmination of this whole future brotherhood thing. Um, I think that's kind of interesting, especially to come yeah. in like towards the end and just kind of be like, let's go blind. Yeah, fun. Fun. There's a lot of stuff that happens in this one. Um, if you haven't been following it, I think it might be a little bit too kinetic um, and chaotic. But generally speaking, solid dialogue across the board. Bennis always does his thing. Yeah. Um, and Stewart is fantabulous. Um, oh, I, I love yeah. like everything about his 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 storytelling, his his pacing, and everything is just 
Oh, yeah, mm. the guy's hug me. The guy's the guy's way too underrated. Right for the stuff that he's right. done, it's just it's just brilliant. Like even taking like a throw off comic that I thought I, I thought was hysterical. Next mm. wave. Oh, he, he his the way he drew it and, and paced everything it was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. Like the the combination of him and Warren doing that one was just ridiculous. I actually found him the most promising part of Fear itself. Yeah. As you know, a crossover event. So yeah. that was that was you know no diss to you fraction, but yeah. It was just is what it was. Yeah, fear itself. Mm. We know. Mm. We know, and you know. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But Stewart. Yeah. But yeah. So this one was really good. Uh, you know, kind of cleaned up everything, but in a way that definitely left the the you know threads for future events to occur yeah. and, and interesting angles. Yeah. Um, again, playing with the time travel stuff, which is always fun and interesting. So I I, I liked it. I had yeah. two time travel books on this one. This was kind of interesting. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. And then my last one was, uh, well, my last one for this little group here, I yeah. got one honorable mention, but uh, uh, Daredevil. So Mark Wade is a buddy of mine, and he killed on this one. This one was like a beautiful, beautiful read. It's, it's a very uh, complete story given to you, done in one, and it's, it's heart warm, like warming. Like it's, it's crazy. Like you get the sense of Matt Murdock is not always the easiest guy to be around, but always thoughtful. Yeah. Which is, it's really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. Did you read that one? Yeah. Okay, good, good, yeah. good. Yeah, it was one, uh, Mark, Mark Wade's run right now on Daredevil is not getting the love that, it's not. that, that it should it's be. It's not. Its numbers aren't the same as, as when Bendis was writing. Right. It, it, or Brubaker. I mean, it's, it's, but it is at le it is at a minimum as good. I think it's, yeah. I, in my opinion, it's a little bit better. I can see that. I can see that. But just nobody, like, guys, give it a shot. Please, it's, please. We, we have the current run, all the single issues for yeah, it. Yeah, it's not, it's not Affleck. Like, that's the yeah. thing. Like, he's really taking him out of his element, and yeah. that's the cool part. Like, yeah. I mean, I thought that when Bendis revealed the identity, that was going to take him out of element. Yeah. Take him out of New York. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, he has Whoa. nothing memorized. He's learning from scratch. Right. And it, it's, it's insane. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, it's so good, because for someone who does everything based on memory, and it just this... Intimate knowledge of, of his surroundings. Exactly. To have to do a brand new. That. Yeah. Shh. And Chris Somney's work is fantastic. Um, I love the the Matt's blind sense. Yeah. That is beautiful. It's yeah. there's something to it that is scientifically magical with the waves and yeah. three dimensionality. And yes, yeah. it's thank you. One one of the best representations of what we wouldn't be able to see right. otherwise. Right. Right. Yeah. Because it also like it showcases the lack of information that he has. Yeah. You see mass and form. That's it. Yeah. And that's genius. Yeah. Absolute genius. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, what, was, what was the last one that you had? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, I, I had Death Vigil number one. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, uh to quote my youngest daughter, mm. it's disgusting. Oh, no. I don't know what the... Mm, I just read. Okay. Oh. Like, the art, art's wonderful. It okay. Is, it is just absolutely beautiful. Right. It, it's, it's atmospheric. Um, it's got a little bit of watercolor feel to it. Oh, that was nice. And I think, I think the plot is people that protect the living from evil dead type things, kind of, are fighting necromancers Whoa. in a graveyard. And, and, and then the necromancer brings like a banshee through after killing his girlfriend. And, and then they fight this dude who then like summons undead Vikings, which normally undead Vikings. I mean, that's kind of awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm there, yeah, right? I'm the first guy in line. Uh, but then the Grim Reaper shows up and like talks to him and his girlfriend who's also kind of a reaper. How big was this book? I, I, 28 pages of just- Only 28 pages? I mean like seriously, that's, that's a novel series that you just told us yeah, about. Yeah, there's no, you didn't give us. You, you didn't give us any time to build the backstory, dude. I mean, that, that's okay. It's just here. Yeah, take it. Yeah. This is the story, and we're jumping in. But it's not engrossing. You're just like thrown in, and and you're like stuff. Yeah. You know, this. What am I gonna do? Wow. So. Yeah, because I was gonna say like the things you're throwing on, like banshees. You said undead Vikings. I'm like, yeah. And you're like, mm -mm. no, no, because because then it ends with like a, a conspiracy to steal the Veil Rippers, which I guess are the magical weapons. Uh, and when they get all 12 Veil Rippers... Horcrux! Horcrux! <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Excuse me. Wow, that was... That was all in issue one? Yeah. 
Did it, did it have a legend in the back to tell you where it, everything was? It should have come with like uh, like a primer. Like I, I, I may be maybe showing my age, but like when the movie Dune first came out in the movie theaters, they gave you like a little pamphlet that was like, this is all the stuff that's going to happen because you're not going to understand anything of it. Which is fair. Just fair. You I, did mark yourself, though. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Dune yeah. came out in a while ago. Yeah, yeah. So... Anyhow, uh, <laughs> yeah, I really just—I felt like I needed one of those. No, like, no, no, that that makes sense though. I mean, when it, when it's chock full of that, then yeah, yeah you kind of need something. Yeah, but next time, come with, with stuff to yeah. let people know. It's a preview of a preview with a preview in it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the honorable mention that I took on was was Nightcrawler uh, number four, and this one again I'm coming in at the end. I don't know why I like doing that. It's just yeah. kind of fun to just kind of come in at the end, and be like yeah, I saw it. Uh, Cliff Notes wise, but um, it's it's Chris Claremont, so it had the classic soap opera X Men tale. I mean, yeah. you know, it ends woefully. You know, it's just tear for Nightcrawler. Um, dude can't catch a break. Escapes from heaven and. He just can't. He just can't. Yeah. But um, really nice artwork. I did like it. It's uh, uh, Todd Nock. Um, cool guy. Uh, I like him a lot. He's, he's pretty awesome. I've actually like watched his career just expand over the last like, 10, 12 years. Um, but yeah, this is solid artwork. Uh, you know, very classic storytelling. If you're a fan of that you know, late 80s, uh, Chris Claremont run stuff, um, grab this one. If you're not reading it already, you should have been. Um, you know, slap yourself if you hadn't because I mean, it's Chris. Yeah, it's Chris. It's, it's Claremont. I mean, yeah. Come on. If you're one of the people that's complaining about, like, oh, all new X Men and right. amazing X Men, just blah, 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 and you want the classic feel, Nightcrawler. Go, go Nightcrawler. That's it. It's, it's right there. It's by the master of that yeah. time period. Yeah, it's right there. Um, and he hasn't lost his touch at all. Yeah. I mean, it's still that classic vibe. It doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't feel slow. Like, oh, I'm watching this movie in black and white. This is classic, yeah. but good stuff. Um, it does bring into play quite a bit of the whole Wolverine losing his powers thing. That's. Still weird to me. I can't. Yeah. It's not. It's not quite tangible. I'm yeah. not, I can't touch it yet. But um, I'm still trying to figure out the whole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, though. Like seriously. Yeah. Like this guy. He's the best at what he does. This guy is geriatric and needs help. Yeah. Like it's. Yeah. Hey, friend. You be careful. You don't fight like you used to. I'll yeah. be okay, bub. Like it's like. Yeah. Get me my my prune juice. Right. <laughs> oh no, I'm constipated. My healing factor is out. So it's. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I know this is leading up to the whole Wolverine's supposed to die thing. Dude, you're going to have to put some serious uh, spit polish on that one to make me make that move, that needle for me, because I can't even... I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But this one was a nice read. If you're into the classic, you know, uh, you know old school X-Men style, definitely grab that one. Uh, you need it, because it's good. It's good stuff. See, si, that's muy bueno. Oui. Oui. Absolument. I <laughs> did <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. I took it there. Finding Nemo, I went for the. I went for the snail. That's right. You know what? I'm just gonna. I'm gonna step out there, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, Zach Brown and his uh, Kickstarter right now uh, for potato salad, yeah. sir. That I know the internet right now is kind of mad at you. Um, I think you're genius. Um, I salute you, and uh, more power to you and your culinary efforts um, for for side dishes, man. Like yeah. that's 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 top notch. Yeah, there are haters out there. Ignore them. Right. You're an American. Hero, sir. You, yeah, you, <laughs> you asked for ten dollars. I mean, that's literally the American dream. I ten dollars in hand, fifty-two thou by the end of the day. Five days later, you, sir. Yeah, you're what independence is all about, and I love it. So thank you for that fun. Um, everybody that's mad, just enjoy some potato salad. Yeah, I was gonna say like, get you a bite, get you a bite, put in and get you a bite. It could be all kinds of love in that. You don't even know. Yeah. You don't even think know. the ingredients, the like imported celery that he can buy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we're talking like from the from the depth of the ocean. Yeah, he could get like special with the with the sea crustedness of things. Oh, I don't even eat potato salad, oh, but I'm I'm the sea salt that would be just kind of embedded. In, oh, see, dude. see, see. Oh, oh. I'm, I just he's about to donate. Watch. Did you to. see this? Did you see what just happened? Boom. Cha Ching. Just went up even higher. So, you know, definitely give that uh, a read. If for nothing else, to check out the comments and see what people are saying about it. Um, it's very, very funny. I personally am actually inspired by it. It gave me yeah. a solid idea for how I would like to approach Kickstarter. So look for that coming soon. Um, but yeah, this is America. Yeah. So awesome. And we dedicate this episode to you. All the way.